Boundaries. Oh my goodness. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. This is such a challenging subject. Some people have fabulous boundaries. They know exactly how to set limits with others and themselves and it's all easy. And some of us have horrible sloppy boundaries where we're all over the place and people are taking advantage of us and we're not able to communicate well. I want to talk to you about a three-part process in discovering how to have good boundaries so that you can feel comfortable in your own skin, that people around you know where they stand, and life in general feels good. This is Zen in a Moment, a podcast where you can learn to train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome, fabulous person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow, flow meaning feeling light, open, and wise, and I am your host, Zen Cryer DeBrook, stress as guidance expert. So here's the thing. Most people don't know what a boundary is. They really don't. A lot of people think that a boundary is when they get pushed too far and then they feel the need to set an ultimatum. Either you will do this or I will do that. And that's not really what a boundary is. A boundary is self-care. A boundary is about looking at what you need in your life to be caring for yourself, whether it's caring for your energy, caring for your emotions, caring for your time, caring for your resources, maybe it be maybe your money, it may be your how long somebody lives in your home, borrowing your car, whatever it may be, boundary is self-care. And so when you've gotten to a place where you feel like you need to set an ultimatum, your boundaries have been pushed way too far. They're way out of whack. And at that point, you need to draw it back. Now, this is a three-part series for a reason, because it's not just so simple for me to say, here's how you set a boundary, one, two, three. That's not how it works, right? We all have these weird ways in which we've been given our boundaries or boundarylessness from our parents and the way we were raised and what we think a good person does or a bad person does. So the first place we need to start is really looking at our own self-care. And what that means is, you know, Some people, for instance, you can give them a compliment and they deflect it. They don't receive it. They say, no, 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 thank you. You know, they can't even say thank you. They're just like, "Ah." when you say, gosh, that's a beautiful blouse or man, you did a great job on that. They can't receive that. And then there's another place where somebody is craving that compliment and they like go looking for it. Some people will let you buy them a cup of coffee and some people will absolutely not let you buy them a a cup of coffee. You have to figure out what feels good to you, not based on what your mind thinks is the right thing in the moment, but what your internal guidance system says, what opens you or closes you, what creates an expansion or a calm feeling in the center of your body or a tight, constricted feeling. Now, I talk a lot about the internal guidance system. You'll hear this on every podcast. If you don't know what your internal guidance system is, it's something you were born with. Go to zeninamoment.com and you'll find a video where I walk you through through actually feeling your internal guidance system so you'll know what I'm talking about. But there's a way in which a lot of the rules in our life about what we can receive or not receive, they actually don't come from what's real for us in our life. Oftentimes, it'll just be coming from past belief systems or, you know, you you shouldn't receive something, you shouldn't let somebody give something to you, or, you know, you should feel uncomfortable if somebody buys you dinner, or... You should give away something. If, if somebody compliments you on something, you should give that to them. There's all these weird rules that we've collected along the way, but they're not necessarily authentic for who we are in our own self-care. They're like this way in which we've been put upon by the way others feel, and that didn't necessarily even come from their own authentic experience in the world. So the first thing to discover is where are you uncomfortable with receiving because sometimes we'll put boundaries up around things in just being receptive that aren't even real for us. So what does that mean, right? It can show up as a compliment, like I said, or it can show up as a, as somebody buying you something. It can show up as I had an experience the other day with a woman who is a single mom and I she was talking about how tired she is and I offered to take her son for a couple hours on Saturday and she immediately came back with, oh, I can't do that. I feel guilty he, I don't, you know, have enough time with him as it is and I would feel bad. But 
15 minutes ago, she was just saying how she's exhausted, can't get anything done, is so far behind on anything and is very stressed out. And yet when I offer to give her some support, she says no. Your internal guidance system is giving you guidance, whether it's an expansion or a contraction. And very often when we say no, we're closed. We haven't been trained to say no when we feel expanded or neutral inside. Most of the time, our no's are coming from a knee-jerk reaction that's based on a belief of how we'll look or what's right or wrong, and it's not even real. It's not even true. So I want to just encourage you in starting out to discover what is something that you are doing a knee-jerk reaction on that you should be receiving. It could be support, it could be help, it could be a compliment, it could be receiving a situation that's happening that you're hearing about, and your knee-jerk reaction is, oh, that's going to be bad for me. I want you to kind of gauge, using your expansion and contraction feeling, your receptivity to the world around you, receiving everything in the world around you. Because from there, once you know what's real, that you should be keeping out, we can set boundaries. But if you don't even know what's real for you, and it's most of it's from a contraction that's a knee jerk, that contraction means the what you're thinking about what you're receiving is not true. And it's very, very important. You cannot set authentic boundaries that will be adhered to by others in a safe way unless you are open. You have to be open when you set your self-care guidelines for others, in other words, boundaries, you have to be open and then they'll be received and they'll feel good for the other person to hold them too. Knee-jerk reactions of boundaries sound like ultimatums or a closing of an intimacy door. They show up as a power trip. They show up as a negative thing and they are. But if you're open and you know what your true self-care is, it actually is received and it feels good for the other person to respond with respect. So first, you have to not be in a knee-jerk place. So notice when your knee-jerk reaction, having a knee-jerk reaction to anything in your world right now. And notice, like, what am I not receiving here? It may be in receiving another person's anger or another person's negative emotion that you find unpleasant. It could be receiving somebody not doing, saying no to you. And your, your reaction to them is, well, to hell with you saying, how, how dare you say no to me with everything I do around here or how much I participate or... That close knee-jerk closing is what we want to get to because that's not true and authentic for you. And if you make a boundary from there, like I just said, it won't work. All right, this is Zen in a Moment, and I want you to please share this podcast. This stuff works, I promise. The more you learn about it, the more you do it, the happier you'll be, the more confident, centered, the, the more you'll feel like yourself, like in your bones yourself. And if you want others to have that, please share this with them. I enjoy comments. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear any topics that you have. You can always reach me through the contact page on zeninamoment.com. And in the meantime, until we get to be together again, I am sending you love and blessings. Mm